Going Linux screencast number four. Installing Linux from a live CD. Welcome to this Going Linux screencast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. In this screencast, we will illustrate how to install Linux from a live CD. This episode is one in a series of screencasts produced by the Going Linux team as part of the Going Linux podcast. In producing this episode, we used a Linux Mint 7 live CD and a ThinkPad laptop PC. If you want to know how to create your own Linux live CD, see our screencast number three. To begin, we have inserted a Linux Mint Live CD into our CD-ROM drive and booted the computer. On this model computer, we press F12 and then choose the CD as the boot device, and the boot process begins. We chose Linux Mint because it is based on Ubuntu, which is arguably the easiest to use and most popular Linux distribution available today. It also comes pre-installed with the software utilities necessary to enjoy the media-rich experience most computer users want today. We'll walk you through the installation process and look around Mint for a bit while the installation completes. On the screen now, you'll see the welcome screen from the Linux Mint developers and a little pulser that goes back and forth indicating that the operating system is about to boot up. The next thing you'll notice in booting from the live CD is that you have a bunch of text on the screen which indicates the process of identifying the hardware and actually booting. And a few seconds later you have the main Linux Mint screen on your computer's display. Let's take a look at the uh, menu that you'll find is very familiar, uh, very similar to what you might find on a Windows computer. You'll see things like a uh, computer icon. You can do things like collapse the menu so that it looks a little bit differently. Clicking on the All Applications button, you see in the upper right hand corner you can see not only some of the pre-selected favorite applications, but a list of all the applications uh, categorized by things like graphics, internet, office, sound and video, preferences, and so on. Let's move back to the favorites applications and let's take a look at the web browser, which you'll find is the familiar Firefox browser nice thing about the Linux Mint Live CD is it defaults to some information on the internet about Linux Mint. Let's click on the install icon that appears on the desktop to begin the installation process before we continue our browsing through the Linux Mint website. The first step is to select your language, then click forward. And next, the time zone. You can select it from the list or you can select it graphically and then change the city on the list. We're in Los Angeles, so we'll select that and click forward. The next step is to test your keyboard or to make a selection if yours is not the default US keyboard. Click forward again. This wizard walks you through the initial setup and as you saw there for a second the partitioner of the drive. Now don't let partitioning a drive scare you. This is just telling the system where you want the operating system put. In this example, you'll see from the blue and the yellow color on the screen that there was already a Linux Mint 7 installation on this, this disk in partition 1. And partition 2 in yellow is a 9 gigabyte partition with uh, nothing on it. If we had 
taken a blank hard drive, this is what it would have looked like. Everything in gray indicates that the hard drive is empty. Moving back to the uh, actual situation where we are going to be installing, this diagram on the bottom shows how this will look afterwards. It's taken some of the free space and installed Linux Mint onto a tiny portion of the second partition. Well, this isn't exactly what we want. We want to make this a complete installation of Linux Mint on this computer. You'll see through the uh, file browser that the existing hard drive is actually uh, made up of two partitions. The file system icon here represents the file system that you're running from the CD in this case. So at this step of the uh, wizard to use the entire hard drive for your Linux Mint installation rather than these two uh, individual partitions and ending up with three partitions, a minor one being used for Linux Mint, you select Use Entire Disk, which wipes out everything that was previously on the disk and installs Linux Mint. Click forward to continue. The next step the wizard takes is to walk you through some additional little pieces of information that the computer needs to finalize the setup. You type in your name. You can choose a different login name if you wish. And I'm hitting tab to move between these fields. Type in a secure password, multiple characters, uppercase, lowercase, and so on. Down here you can give your computer a name and choose to log in automatically if you wish. Uh, I select you require a password for login for additional security. Click forward and the final step before actually beginning the installation is to give you a summary of the selections that you have made. You'll notice that it is actually creating two different partitions here. One for the main operating system and another for a swap drive, which in Windows terms is the same as a swap file. Uh, there are additional options here for changing where you want to put the bootloader, but that's really a um, an advanced option that for a beginner I would uh, recommend that you skip. On uh, finishing the wizard, the actual partitioning of the hard drive begins. This is now overriding the data that was on the hard drive previously and installing the Linux Mint operating system. Since we're running from a live CD, we can actually use the computer from its live CD configuration to browse the internet or do other functions as well. Explore the software that may be on the uh, CD and what will be on the installation once it's completed. But let's take a look at the forums in the Linux Mint site. The forums are a great place to find help and assistance from other Linux Mint users. So if you have trouble or need assistance, this is one of the first places you can go. And you'll notice that there are things like uh, notices of events, some answers to newbie questions, non-technical questions, software applications, hardware support, networking, Let's scroll down a little bit further. We have some multimedia codecs, other topics, tutorials and how-tos. This is actually a very good forum with lots of different topics and subjects categorized based on a number of different criteria. So you can find just about anything you're looking for here in the Linux Mint forums, and it's all related to Linux Mint. Other distributions will also have similar forums that relate to that particular distribution and will help people uh, get things started. Now we'll look at the newbie questions just as an example. Let's scroll down and look. Yeah, here are some examples installing in uh, using Mint, considerations before you install, um, and a caution not to spam on the, uh, on the forum site, of course scrolling. Uh, let's just click into the beginner's guide and uh, using Linux Mint. Here's an example of some information that might be presented on a typical forum post. It provides a link 
to some information, um, the user's guide itself, which we could click through and take a look at that. Uh, also on a forum you'll find things like uh, uh, other users and people uh, posting comments uh, about that post or posting responses. And oftentimes those will be questions as well as comments and other users will provide answers or further comments. And this is where you can uh, join in, ask your question, get some answers from um, from uh, an experienced expert. And in this case, uh, it looks like uh, this particular user may have had uh, a problem and uh, someone helped them to uh, get started. Let's scroll down a little bit further. And a success story here. I'm not looking back after switching to Linux Mint. Here's someone asking for help with a Dell 600 laptop. You can be very specific on the help that you request. Let's check on our installation, see how things are going. Looks like it's copying files. Sometime later, you'll see that we're, we've progressed quite a long ways. Uh, we're now installing language packs, and you'll see that uh, the progress is being indicated on the bottom of this dialog box. Installing supported languages, and now it shows installing the system, setting up the clock. So you get a good idea of what is actually going on as the progress bar moves along. It's a little bit like watching paint dry, but it is uh, definitely something that is faster than installing many other operating systems. Installing Linux from a live CD has the advantage of allowing you not only to watch the installation as it progresses, but also to use the computer because you are really using the operating system itself to accomplish some things while you are uh, accomplishing the installation because the software is actually running off the CD while the installer is installing it to your hard drive. The grub bootloader you see displayed on the screen there just a second ago is the little piece of software that allows Linux to actually boot. It is uh, the boot software. And can see that it is that the Linux Mint installer is installing uh, a number of things including creating a final log of the installation process itself. Now we can continue testing out using the live CD or we can restart to boot from our hard drive and actually use our installation. Let's do that. Now we have booted our computer from the newly installed Linux Mint installation. You'll see the boot screen with a number of selections here. The pulsing welcome screen that we saw just a little while ago. And now you'll see that that pulsar has actually turned into a progress bar that shows the boot progress. It actually doesn't take very long to boot. And now we can log in using the username that we chose during the installation process. And hitting tab or enter, I now enter the password, hit tab or enter again, and the, the login process completes. When first booting to Linux Mint, it provides this uh, handy-dandy reminder welcome. 
and you'll see it, it has things like reviewing the release notes, visiting the forums, connecting to a chat room, and an opportunity to donate to the Linux Mint community. Let's uh, eject the CD that we had in the CD drive. and move on to a brief tour of what's on our computer now. So if we double click the computer icon you'll see that we have the floppy drive, the CD-ROM drive, and the file system. In this case the file system is our hard drive. And you can see the various system folders that make up the Linux operating system. We'll close the file browser. And now let's take a look at that menu again. Same menu we saw from the live CD with the various applications and you'll see that under administration and graphics all the programs that you would ever need to get started using your computer. So now that we finished our installation let's turn off the computer. We can also restart or go into hibernation mode since we've installed this on a laptop. This has been number four in a screencast series from the Going Linux team. Visit us at goinglinux.com. Thanks for watching. Theme music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com.